In this video, I'm going to show you a series of selection methods and ways to retouch small parts to large parts of images. I'm going to show you how to remove these birds and then how to remove this giant pier. And then I'm going to show you how to remove this pier with the people on it to make it look like this. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Okay, first, a selection isolates part of an image so you can work on just that area without affecting the rest of the image. When you make a selection with any of the selection tools, you get an animated border, kind of like marching ants that looks like they're walking around the edge of your selection. The area inside that animated border represents your selection. Now, if you ever want to add to a selection in order to select more, you can either click the Add to Selection icon, which changes depending on which selection tool you're on. You'll find that always up in the Options bar. Or you can just press Shift and drag. If you want to select less to have less to remove something from your selection, just click the Subtract from Selection icon in the Options bar, or press Alt or Option and drag. Now, after you have a selected portion of the image and you want to make an adjustment. You can do anything to that selection that you want. Apply a filter, you can paint it, you can fill it, you can duplicate it, you can add a layer mask with it, you can add an adjustment layer. Just remember that when a selection is active, adjustments affect only the selected area of that specific layer. So let's get started. Command zero to fill the screen. One of the quickest ways to fix this I believe it's just to go grab the spot healing brush tool right here. If you don't see yours, click and hold and just choose spot healing brush. And this is really great. All you do is just paint over it. Paint over whatever you want to remove and Photoshop will figure it out. So I'm clicking and just painting, same as I did in the painting demo. Generally, you want to paint a spot bigger than whatever you want removed, but not dramatically bigger, just bigger. And there are like 29 birds here, so you've got to do this 29 times. But this is real time, and I'm done. Now it looks like I have a dust spot here. I'll get rid of that from my sensor, and I'm done. So this is finished. That's how you would remove a few small things. Now what if you wanted to remove, say, this entire pier? Another thing you could do is you could come over to this quick selection tool and just paint over it. But I have to say, this tool works best when it's got color and tone. This particular tool didn't always do great on black and white images. So I'm going to hit Command or Control D to deselect, which you can find up here under the Select menu and deselect. But the keyboard shortcut, Command or Control D, saves you a ton of time. Well, how about um, the Object Selection tool? And I'm going to just draw a box around it and say the object is the pier. It did an okay job, but I actually want that reflection as well. So I hit Command or Control D. I think for this, I would come up to the old school selection tools, the lassos. And I just do the polygonal or the regular. The polygonal lets you click and drag, click, and then I drag, and it won't lock down until I click again. Pull over, click. This works because it's such a rectilinear shape. When you see the marching ants, that means you now have an active selection that's ready to have an effect applied to it. So what I would probably do is just right click and choose content aware fill and it's going to try and figure it out. Now it's pulling from the green areas. So if you don't want it to pull from the mountains or the sky, unpaint those, right? Remove those from it, and it's a live update right over here. Yeah, choose all of this. So I'll click on the plus icon, and I'll paint all this. It's like, yeah, all of that looks good. And look over here. See, it's, it's auto-updating as we go. And I think that actually looks really good. I'll just click OK. Command D to deselect, it's gone. Like we have removed an entire pier just with those short techniques. So let's try it with this image. Let's use that same technique. Let's try the hand lasso tool, which is kind of a free hand draw, something like this. You just want to be a little bit in front of your subject. It doesn't have to be super good. Now notice I got the guy's shirt a little bit right here. So I'm gonna hold down the shift key and just add to that selection, let go. See how easy that is? Now there's another tool. If you click and hold in the spot retouching area and choose the patch tool, now this particular image may be a little bit not the right size, but I'll try. I'm going to click and drag, and I'm going to say, patch it with this area over here. But I don't have enough area to go over to, right? Like it's, it's not going to work because there's just, I don't have enough to pull from. So I hit Command and Control Z to undo that. Then maybe let's try Edit and Fill. Oh, wait, look at that. Another place to use Content Aware Fill. But if I didn't choose this, and I just chose fill. You can actually drill down in this dialog box 
and choose content aware. You have a lot of ways to get to the same exact place. Click OK. Didn't do a bad job. There's some blurry edges here. I'm going to hit Command Z to undo that. So one of the things I'm concerned about is I'm about to do everything on my background layer, and I typically don't like to do that. So I'm going to hit Command or Control D, Command or Control J to duplicate the layer. And just to save myself some time, remember any of these selection areas will activate the Select Subject button. Let's see if Photoshop can tell what the subject is. You know, it, it didn't do a bad job. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the polygonal again. I like this one just because it's so quick. And click back at the source point. There we go. Now I'm going to right click and choose Content Aware Fill to bring up that quick dialog box because I want to see what it's choosing. And I want to tell it by holding down the Alt or Option key to, you know, yeah, add this, add this. And it did a really good job. Maybe I'll toggle on high color adaptation for right in here. Still like it. I'm going to click OK. Command D. Did a decent job in the foreground, right? Command 1 to zoom in. Like, I don't see any problem here, but right around here, I start to see my line. And here it looks a little blurry. So here's how you would fix this part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to merge this with this by hitting Command or Control E. See how it squished it all together? Then I'm going to grab the Clone Stamp tool, which is right here. You can also hit S. To make this work, you have to Alt or Option click. You're going to get a bullseye with your cursor, and then you click where you want to paint from. So I'm going to paint from this area right here. See how I pull that, it, it can line that up so you can pull it over. Now I'm painting at 100% and that's a little intense. So I'll Command Z it. I'll go down to 60%. I'm talking about the opacity. You can lower or raise it just by dragging over the word, or you can just hit the number. I can hit 8 for 80%, 4 for 40%. See how that works. Option key for the bullseye. Select there. Make my brush smaller. Maybe that'll help make it not so ridiculous. Got to be 100% it looks like. But that's too dark. So I'm pulling from too dark of an area. So I hit Command Z a couple of times and start over. See, this is the problem with the clone stamp tool. Let me start from this area. See, that doesn't look good either. This is sort of the problem with the clone stamp tool. It takes a lot of back and forth, which is why some of these selection tools are really nice to have nowadays. So I just want to get rid of the blurriness. So now I need to fix this line. I want to be hard. Now I'll come over here and hit 7 for 70%, just to kind of blend this in a little bit. Maybe I'll hit three for 30%. See if I can somehow make these blend together a little better. Come from the other side. You see what I mean? This, this part's a little difficult, but remember, we moved a giant pier. But as we keep working it, we're going to get a better and better solution. Now let's see if an adjustment layer will also help camouflage what's going on. So I'm going to go up to the vibrance, which you know how to use now. I'm going to say, anything that's muted, please give it more color. I like that. And then I'll pull up the saturation as well, just a touch. Command minus. I've got to say, turn that off and back on. I still see this tiny blurry area. I don't know that other people would, but you can continue to work at it and kind of get it to where you want it so that people don't. But I think for a quick fix, this looks really good. So I'd save it out and keep on moving. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. Huh. Whoa. Yes! <laughs> God. Oh my God, I did. This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.